Draft Bit, Butterflow, Adalo, Bubble, Blide. Which no-code mobile app builder do I use to build my mobile app startup? This is the decision I see so many entrepreneurs get torn on when this is the exact last thing you should be thinking about. You should be thinking about building an app as quick as you can to get to your end users. Except we're all entrepreneurs, we're all perfectionists, we're all creatives at the end of the day, and this is something that keeps us all up at night. So in this video, I'm gonna explore two major players in the no-code mobile app builder space, DraftBit and Flutterflow. And I'm gonna compare each one of them side by side to help you pick the right no-code mobile app builder for your app startup. Let's jump right into it. All right, so let's take a look at DraftBit. DraftBit is uniquely different off the bat because DraftBit allows you to create native mobile apps and responsive web apps. And just so you know, the reason that these no-code builders can do this under the hood is because they're powered by some sort of programming framework. And DraftBit is actually powered by React Native, which is a programming framework developed by Facebook. Facebook is responsible for developing and maintaining the React and the React Native framework for building mobile apps. So when you're working with React Native, you're working with the SDKs that the Facebook team is maintaining. So just going down their website here, the first thing we notice is a demo of their interface. I honestly feel like a lot of these no-code tools have all modeled after Webflow because Webflow has done an amazing job with laying out their UI, especially for novice builders. So just surface level here, we can see that there's screens at the top left. We have a component tree or a widget tree here to the left. We can choose different components, basic components like views, text, uh, et cetera, and you can kind of drag them onto the screen here. And then we also have a right side panel probably for some more advanced properties. Cool. What can you design? It seems that DraftBit offers a fair share of templates and that's always good. What developer doesn't like templates? It makes jumping into things super easy. Looks like we're able to use REST APIs, which is extremely important when you are building software that integrates with other services, except this is where I am seeing some developers make mistakes, especially first time developers. They are integrating you know, APIs directly into the front end, which is absolutely a red flag. And uh, we talk about it inside of our Ambitious Labs programs and our Dreams into Apps program. We talk about this concept of decoupling your apps and actually separating your front end from your back end and having two separate services. One should be your front end and then you should have a back end that's potentially built on something like BuildShip where you can have all your business logic there. So that's just a quick teaser as to like what we do in the Dreams into Apps bootcamp. We coach entrepreneurs on like how to build uh, apps using best practices. But I think that these no code tools sometimes advertise the wrong things. They advertise that you can integrate REST APIs directly into the front end, but that's actually not what you should be doing as a front end developer. So just a heads up there. Does look like they advertise web first, which is cool. You can test it right on. Looks cool from the front. Let's jump in and see what it's all about. So I have open here a blank app that I've already started. So let's jump in and see what DraftBit's all about. I've already created an account, and when you jump in, they do have this uh, interesting dashboard where they're advertising a bunch of different uh, offerings. They have workspaces, starter app, example screens, uh, and a lot more. Looks like they keep track of their kind of news and stuff here too. A lot going on. So initially what I want to do is I want to create an app. It looks like I have a bunch of starter apps available, so I could literally pick one of these things and just jump in. Except someone like me, I like to understand what goes on under the hood at the base level before I start taking advantage of some of the more features that spoil you, if you will. I don't like to be spoiled right off the bat. So let's figure out how to create our first project. We'll go workspaces, create project, and then let's call this project a you know task tracker. So we'll go test ta task tracker and hit next. It looks like it's making us go through some sort of onboarding. I'm just going to go ahead and quickly fill this out. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, and now it actually allows us to choose a starting point. So that's really cool. I've noticed as someone running an app academy that many entrepreneurs have app ideas that fit into about 10 buckets from marketplaces to dating apps to e-commerce apps to you know habit tracking apps, working out apps, fitness, meditation, e-learning, like most entrepreneurs are building niche apps inside of like 10 different buckets. And so I think DraftBit did a good job like showcasing each one of these buckets here using like sample products. So nice work, DraftBit. Let's start with a dating app and hit next. 
Really cool. They allow you to pick your app icon. And I think this is something that uh, Flutterflow doesn't do a good job with is onboarding first time app builders into the ecosystem. They require app builders to know how to create icons and they don't really make it easy to generate an icon. So I think DraftBit definitely wins a point uh, for the initial onboarding and initial setup. So cool. Looks like you can jump in and the app is not being created. Awesome. So now let's jump into Flutterflow and build our first project in Flutterflow and see what the onboarding experience is like. Beautiful. So I have open Flutterflow here. I'm going to create new and Flutterflow also has templates, but they don't actually use templates. They don't actually offer templates here for real apps. So like apps that could be launched on their own, just like uh, DraftBit did. So I think DraftBit understood that most entrepreneurs have apps that fit into 10 different buckets and they were able to capitalize on that. Whereas Flutterflow looks like it has a couple random templates here, but I don't think each any of these templates are like actually relevant to what at least I'm seeing the apps that my entrepreneurs are building inside of our program. So I'll just grab any one of these. Like I don't know how many people are building like a Model 3, uh, a Tesla Model 3 like charging app, but we'll do that anyways. We'll just grab this sample and jump in. Okay, cool. So now we're asking Cool. So now we're asked to onboard our project and we'll say task tracker. It looks like it showcases the package name here, which I'm not sure actually what that package name is if I'm a new developer. So I'm a little bit turned off by the initial education that Flutterflow is doing here, but that's okay because Flutterflow, in my opinion, is meant for people who want to have full control of the app and understand the bare bones of the mobile application. So I think that's where they're doing a great job. So I'm gonna just back out of this, hit skip, um, and then land on my app. So cool, in just a couple of clicks, we had our mobile app uh, started, but I will give DraftBit the point here uh, because they were able to identify that most apps fit into buckets and that as long as you could start with one of those templates, it could be really easy to modify it. So. So one point to draft bit for onboarding. Awesome, so now that we are in the platform, let's take a look at the ease of use and how the UI is set up. Awesome, so let's go back to draft bit and start looking at the ease of use and the UI for both platforms. So I'm inside of draft bit and it looks like, you know, we have a screen here. And if I were to use this screen navigator, it looks like I can toggle between screens, beautiful. Looks like I can toggle between screens and kind of modify things as, as they are. And when I click on various items, it looks like that is reflected here in the layer explorer. And then when you click on various items, the right side panel here is populating to adjust to the properties because especially in software development, each item that you have on a screen has different properties. Like text boxes have different properties, you know, buttons have different properties. And so when you are writing React Native, which I've done for a long time, each component has various properties that you can modify. And so I think that typically these no code builders are actually just exposing you the properties for each unique component here. So I think they do a good job with that. Generally looks pretty good. You know, we can Use this right side panel to look for basic. We can look for, you know, more logic based actions like databases. And yeah, looks like up here we could export the code, which is awesome because that's one big plus point for a mobile developer is if you're able to start the app yourself and then export the code and hand it off to a developer, that's how you're gonna be able to create a lot of um, complex functionality. So cool. Source code is not available on your current plan. To use this feature, please upgrade your account. Okay, so we'll have to choose a plan. Okay, one thing I want you all to know is that when I was initially creating my account for DraftBit, they didn't let me choose a free plan. They actually forced me into putting my credit card in and getting uh, me to start a trial. So that actually was a big turnoff and I did put my credit card in and start the trial just for the sake of this video. But I'm actually not really happy about having to do that. And then on top of that, I started a trial for the basic plan and now I'm having to be... Uh, and now I'm being asked to upgrade again to the pro plan just to take advantage of the export code feature. And, and I get that, like, you know, if you are trying to export the code, the platform should be rewarded for that because they handled a lot of the code for you and that code is very valuable. So 
I do understand that. You have to remember at the end of the day, these no-code tools are taking a lot of time off your hands. And so for you to have to pay them even $80 per month is saving you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars uh, if you were to hire a developer. So um, I respect that. However, it's not very intuitive for the sake of this lesson to not be able to test that out. Cool. They have a navigate mode up top where I can see how users navigate throughout my app, I'm guessing. Ah, cool. So it's a way for me to um, actually click through my app and view it as a prototype, which I think is extremely powerful, especially in our Dreams and Apps program. One of the phases in our methodology is actually building a working prototype, which means you build the entire UI of your application in Flutterflow, but you don't hook up any databases. You don't set up any authentication. You're just doing the working prototype. And this is actually a pretty cool phase in the software development lifecycle because you could take your working prototype and send it to all your investors, partners, clients, customers, end users, and you can start getting their feedback and make changes in your storyboard before you actually go all in and implement uh, database logic. So really well done by DraftBit here. Um, looks like you have a way to set your project live and then you could publish it. And since they support responsive web, uh, progressive web app, Apple App Store, and Google Play Store, it looks like we have all those options here to deploy. Um, let's say I wanted to set up Apple App Store. It looks like uh, you just have to put together your build configuration, your bundle ID, your App Store ID, set up your private key, and actually get this connected. So overall, very intuitive. Um, it does look like they have support for custom code. You need to upgrade for that. And so far, so good. Love that they have some resources here. And I don't see why you wouldn't be able to build you know, a pretty solid application in something like this. So now let's go back into Flutterflow and check out what they have to offer. Awesome. So remember back at Flutterflow, I just grabbed one of these templates. So I'm not really stoked about, you know, that specific template, but I'm going to use, you know, these items here on the left. You know, we have a UI builder up top where we can actually see all the elements. Cool. So heading back over to Flutterflow, I use one of the templates, which I'm not too stoked about, but essentially I just want to test to see how, you know, their UI builder works. And so if I grab anything on the screen and kind of move it around, I notice that it does update. And then whenever I click on any of these elements, I'm noticing that the right side panel does update. I do think that Flutterflow looks a lot sexier and they did a much better job of like uh, just making a very slick UI and giving me a lot more space to work with the app. Um, mind you, I am at 75% and I do kind of like staying backed out here. What was I at? I was a little bit actually zoomed out. So if I were to zoom out a bit, it does look like they also give me enough space. I like to use 75% zoom so that I can get more real estate on my screen. Pro tip, but overall it looks uh, very similar. On the left-hand side here, it does look like I have a few items here. On the left side, we have a menu. I'm not sure that uh, DraftBit offered that. No, there doesn't seem to be a menu here, which actually means you might be able to have more functionality inside of Flutterflow. So they offer you know, a UI builder where you can get access to all of these elements. They have similarly what's called their widget tree where you can see how your elements are stacked up across the page. They have a storyboard where you can see how you navigate, which I feel like is very similar to their navigate mode, except uh, DraftBit's navigate mode doesn't actually lay it out for you. We have access to Firebase here, data types, app state, API calls, you know, media assets, custom code, cloud functions, tests, design system, and settings. Back at DraftBit, I don't recall seeing these types of features, or at least they weren't readily available. Okay, we have settings here, and you can update some of these settings. Okay, cool. And we have, you know, export code, which we already tried. So you have settings here, you know, shortcuts, export code, live preview, four screen rebuild, Okay, you have your media assets here, themes and styles, variables. Okay, so DraftBit also has very similar features, except they're buried up top. Um, I do think it's more intuitive to have them here on the left side because honestly, these are things that affect your app quite often. And I think it's important to have them accessible at the same level as everything else. And so Butterflow does a good job of giving you all the features, all the settings available here. So I do think that uh, that is a bit more intuitive. Awesome. Overall. Both are very similar in the way that they're laid out. I think Flutterflow definitely wins on UI and ease of use because they give you all the resources you need in your left-hand side, plus they make the Firebase very accessible here. Firebase is the database that you may or may not use. It's most likely the database they use. Over 75% of Flutterflow apps are using uh, Firebase. And so if you choose to go with uh, Flutterflow, you're likely going to be 
committing to Firebase as your backend of choice. And honestly, I'm pretty confused here. I don't see where in DraftBit you would actually be hooking up your database. And since database is a very critical part of your app development you know, stack, uh, it's important to make that intuitive. So I don't think DraftBit wins there. I think Flutterflow definitely wins on ease of use and then database management. So mainly major differences I'm seeing here are the UI. And keep in mind that Flutterflow does have that second mover advantage since they came after all the other players. They were able to see what all the other players were doing wrong, what they were doing well, and be able to improve. Flutterflow does have their AI gen, which works decently well, but I do think that that's not enough. I love how DraftBit offered us predefined templates of apps that actually worked, like they were real apps that you could literally launch, like fast food, on call, streamline, first sight. I love that these were already starter apps that I literally could just grab and just make my own and literally launch. I think that Flutterflow needs to improve on their templates and they need to make sure that they give their first time app builders a chance to have a fully functioning app that they could actually launch right away. Maybe the database would be built out completely and you can just get going. So if you're a brand new novice builder, I think that you should start with something like DraftBit so you could at least get your hands dirty and use your first no code tool, maybe put together your first app and yeah, I think they're they're going to crush it if they continue to um, offer that. It does seem like they have expert services as well, where you can have a team of experts. I think this is cool from DraftBit side, but obviously it doesn't really um, benefit the community at large because now the DraftBit community or people who like DraftBit can't build businesses off this because if I were to be offering DraftBit services, DraftBit would just out compete me who's not going to trust draft bit but i think flutterflow is doing a way better job at you know utilizing the community um, and since the community of flutterflow is uh, very tight-knit um, people are always on reddit and if i need help you know like api call not working in flutterflow like you can easily find you know the flutterflow community and get access to them so I think DraftBit would be great for someone first time, but Flutterflow is probably going to win overall when it comes to you know community support, ease of use to begin with, but there is a steep learning curve on Flutterflow. I do think DraftBit may not have that type of learning curve, but you know at the end of the day, I will always encourage people to go where the support is and where community is because being a developer is tough. You are going to run into a ton of problems, and as you run into problems, you need to have a community right at your fingertips to help you. So... Yeah, that concludes this comparison. I do think DraftBit has a place in this market. It may seem that DraftBit is for a different type of person who prefers React Native, who prefers you know having starter apps. You know, we'll check out their YouTube channel real quick. We see that DraftBit has one point. Hey everyone, I'm K. Brian from DraftBit. We see that DraftBit has one point seven two k subscribers and that they've actively they were active at one point. They were posting about a year ago, but we all know that Flutterflow is crushing it when it comes to. Their YouTube channel, they have almost 50,000 subscribers and they're very active on Twitter, very active on Instagram, and they're absolutely crushing it when it comes to content. So yeah, um, I hope this gives you the information you need to choose between DraftBit and Flutterflow. If you need any support with Flutterflow or you have an app idea that you want to bring to life, definitely check out ambitiouslabs.io and learn more about our Dreams Into Apps 2.0 program. And if not, if you like videos like this, please like and subscribe and see you in the next lesson. Take care.